Hey everybody, my name is Brendan Noble and I'm a young adult author. Welcome back to my Slavic Saturday series where we talk about Slavic mythology and folklore related to my Slavic fantasy series and specifically the first book in the series, A Dagger in the Winds. This week we're talking about a more somber topic with the Latavietz or the Latavitsa, which are two demons, the male and female form of the same demon that are related to uh, the death of unborn or stillborn children. But before I dive too much into these demons first, let, I just want to remind you that I'm still looking for advanced readers for A Dagger in the Winds. Specifically, advanced readers are people that receive a free copy, ebook copy of the book early and in exchange for reviewing the book either on Amazon or their favorite retailer. And that way I can get more uh, reviews up early for the book in time for the launch. But now, let's dive in. It might seem kind of odd that a demon would seem related to the thought of death of children um, because demons were usually in our idea of what a demon is it, we kind of think of it in a negative context but demons kind of meant a different thing to the early Slavs specifically they were often just meant to be spirits of some kind they were often people that some of them they lived uh, selfish or immoral lives or but more commonly they either died too early or died what was considered an unnatural death and with the Lataviets we kind of fall into the more not live being able to have the chance to live a full life because it, again being the children uh, who were either stillborn or aborted fetuses they never had that chance to have a life and so this demon is the soul of these um children that never had that life so it's actually more common than you would expect as well in slavic mythology children involved such as the creatures of the Na navki and the poroviets are two other creatures that are related to babies dying and the form that their soul takes because they died too soon. So it's something that is grappled with in Slavic myth and we'll talk about it a little bit more later in the video. But just know that it doesn't take on that incredibly negative form that we tend to think in the Christian idea of what a demon is. So in its demonic form, the Lataviets tends to take the form of a bird, specifically any blackbird, um, commonly the raven, which is kind of a theme as well in Slavic myth that birds often represent departed souls. Um, in this context, it can appear as this raven, or it can also appear as a bird with some human parts, such as a head, a childlike head or sometimes a childlike torso and legs. It ranges again because like many other creatures in Slavic myth, these demons are shapeshifters and so they can take multiple forms. And another type of form of what as well is just a human with either their arms replaced by wings or just wings on their back. So as a bird-like creature as a demon, the Lataviets is also a creature of the wind and has powers of, of the wind. And like the wind as well, it can be very unpredictable. They can be powerful and destructive, but they can also be slight and helpful for things like windmills. It depends on the creature's mood. But because of this unexpected attitude of the Lataviets, they can do things even such as lightning strikes that set farms on fire and other things, and that could make them a dangerous creature. The Latavitsa as well was a, had the same powers of the Lataviets, but it was also known as, she thought it was fought to take the, a female form with the human body and the wings of a bird, and she would seduce men and they were impossible to resist her apparently and she would draw them away and they would leave everything behind and the only thing that they could do to protect themselves was carrying around garlic with them. So that's another myth that was associated with this as well and you would think on this that they would be considered negative demons because of this. But like I said before Slavic demons can have different forms positive and negative but this one's a little bit more neutral. You could convince the Lataviets to be friendly to you by offerings or spells or prayers to it. And all these things in combination apparently could make their winds more predictable, their winds more favorable to your crop, to your windmill, to whatever you were wanted to be with. They could become house spirits and become friends to a family with that. 
And I want to mention a theme with, that comes with this that is common in Slavic mythology, but also just mythology in general. A lot of these stories have to do with tragedy or other unfortunate events that occur in people's lives and their attempts of the early Slavs to rationalize this. We have science, medicine, and other things like that that could prevent some of these things and allow us to understand them more today. But tragedy is still tragedy regardless of your technology. And so while they didn't have this understanding, we come up with stories both then and now to try to rationalize these events and try to comfort ourselves and bring some type of understanding to it. And I, be I believe the Latavietz is one of these things that was trying to bring an understanding, perhaps to a tragic event that would happen in people's lives with the loss of a child. And the idea of potentially the bird with the ch child flying free, both as either a child or other souls flying free as birds, I think is kind of a comforting thought where if you see the raven or something that that could be your child watching over you even though they've departed and I, I think there's something comforting and positive about that even in tragedy and I, that that's why we need these stories whether you believe them or not because people need things to comfort them and also rationalize things that are happening around them especially in you think of the period of the early slaps surrounded by forests and creatures and darkness that they didn't understand. So I might be wrong, but that's just my thoughts about why the Lataviets fits in with the Slavic myths. And lastly, my own stories. The Lataviets doesn't necessarily appear in A Dagger in the Winds, but is planned to appear in later books in the series. As you can tell based off the name of the first book, the winds are a theme in the series, and the Lataviets, as a demon of the winds, is going to have a role to play and the themes in which the Latavia speaks of will also appear. And again, if you're interested in uh, reading the series and getting it earlier than anybody else, go ahead and check out the links down in the comments below, below and read my newsletter in which I'll have uh, early looks at the book, which will be coming out sometime next year. And with that, I'm done with this week's Slavic Saturday, and I'll see you guys all next week. We'll be talking about more Slavic mythology and folklore.